Okay. Um, I've uh, actually replaced the transistor, so I've replaced the. Where's the other one gone? I've replaced the, um, the two output transistors uh, and the two driver transistors as well. What I've actually found in the past, the direct coupled audio stages um, basically just fire the, the whole lot out and replace all the transistors. Um, it saves a lot of grief later on. Generally what happens is that the one transistor will probably become leaky or short out for some reason, voltage spike, whatever, and it'll just take the whole chain out. And if you don't replace them all, um, you know, it's, it's quite easy to measure them to find out which of the faulty ones, but leakage is actually quite hard to measure. And if it does go leaky, it can quite easily upset the bias of the whole stage. The output stage starts drawing huge amounts of quiescent, and, and of course, boff and your new transistors just go up and smoke it's not so much that that but it's the the stress on this printed circuit board you know continually replacing components and especially with the sony here the the circuit board's actually quite cruddy they're made of a phenolic thing the tracks are well they're not particularly rigid with the with the circuit board like you've got to be extremely careful because it's very very easy to lift the tracks off and once you do that, even though it can be repaired with wire links, it's just a pain. And it makes a messy job as well. So, I also point out, these these radios, they're all built to a price. And as you can see, we've got these, oh, I think you can see it. We've got these... Uh, We've got these these horrible ribbon cables. <coughs> they're, they're sort of, I don't know, they're semi-rigid, they're horrible things, but what Sony have done, rather than use nice plug-in assemblies, which obviously cost too much money, they've bared the ends of the wires and just poked them through the PCB and soldered them on the other side. When, you, when you're working on this stuff, you tend to flex the boards around and tip them over quite a bit, replacing components and doing measuring. Um, and eventually they'll, they'll fracture it at the PCB. So what I do, I, I, I basically just temporarily wing a table, a cable tie around the cables and that prevents, or helps to prevent this happening. So um, yeah, just something to keep in mind because um, you know, especially the printed ribbon, you know those, those horrible plastic ribbon cables that they use on computer keyboards and stuff they don't take a lot of lot of stress at all. So you're far better trying to remove them if possible. You're only replace them once you're pretty certain you've got the, the, the equipment repaired. Okay, uh, the other thing, I always use a low current power supply when I'm working on this stuff. Um, so if you do accidentally short something out, you, you, it'll just short the power supply out. Not cause any great stress on the tracks, burn any components out. Or anything like that. So let's uh, hook this now, hook this up, and we'll try it. Um, on these things. Oh, that sounds better. Listen to that. A few shows. Like, here's a microphone, come on, do some hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Super stoked to be there. Yeah, it won't sound that great because we've just got a test speaker on here, just lying on the on the table. The speakers always sound better with a battery, as you know. Okay, so that's the FM mission. And the AM has got light. And we're certainly not going to get any uh, nothing happening there as far as the station goes. 
simply we saw it, not to the chance in this way. The simple fact of picking up more than on the parent and touching the ferrite rod very often increases or changes it means the iron section is actually working. And now we're on the short wave section and we've got the silence, which is hardly surprising because these radios mute themselves if there is no lock in the loop. So I've also noticed that the the meter is actually working. It's a bit lazy. Um, I'm not sure. End the music video. Jamie Phillips and Tessie. Sure, sure, but these meters always cause a bit of trouble. Beat that race was over. Um, meters from home. I'll check that out at some stage. But right now, it's probably time to. I might replace that for first of the first, and then put that board back into the chassis, and start tracking down the. I think the frequency counter might be a problem next. But um, as I say, that, that's going to be the. I like the, the, the big issue with this, the thing too. basically the radio is useless without a frequency readout and it's dependent so on that digital readout in order to tell you where you are, where you're you tuning. Know, even half, so this here's been a success. I reckon I'll throw the ball to Johnny Barron and go, young fella, have a so crack. Uh, I'll stop this here and move on later on. Okay.